Welcome back to another edition of... Retro Tech! Where we bring you only the finest vintage multimeters and test equipment of days gone by. Ah, nothing says nostalgia like a 1980s digital multimeter. Well, isn't she a beauty? This is a brand new old Radio Shack 22-801 digital multimeter. First released way back in 1999, the 22801 has been around for almost 25 years. By the way, it's on page 172 of the Radio Shack catalog. Something that really catches my eye with this meter is the fact that it has some really cool lines. What I mean by lines? Well, just the shape, the form. I mean, look at that hold zero button. We have this recessed uh, little area here. We've got these cool lines over here. We have uh, buttons that are recessed in the meter and just all around a really cool ergonomic flow. Now, I don't know if that's because it was like almost 2000, you know, the big millennium thing was about to happen, but this was a very cool looking digital multimeter any way you look at it. Also had that removable boot, very nice. And you could put your test leads here as well as hang it on the wall with that little holder there. So all in all, a really nice rubberized boot looks really good 25 years later doesn't it also has that tilt stand thank gosh now this tilt stand really goes back quite a way more than 45 degrees another cool thing is that radio shack could give us a little sticky on the back of that tilt stand how to manually turn off the meter how to zero the meter and how to disable the auto power off very nice radio shack catalog number 22801 released in 1999 gorgeous this particular Radio Shack was manufactured in China. Uh, many were made in Korea back then, but uh, they were moving over to the Chinese assembly in the late 90s. So to turn the meter on, simply touch that select switch. It says, hello. They were so polite back in the 90s. And there you go, it is on. And to turn it off, it was a little weird, a little weird. He had to hold down on the hold and the range button, and then it goes to the off. So a little, little weird, I gotta say, but uh, anyway, it works. So let's turn it back on, shall we? Hello, Mr. Radio Shack 22801. So we're greeted with a nice 4,000 count LCD display. Looking good now, just as good as it did 24, 25 years ago. Now, they also highlighted the capacitance function because, believe it or not, capacitance wasn't all too popular on a meter back then either. So to have it on your meter was considered a bit of a bonus. I really enjoyed this meter uh, more so without the boot, just because it's such a light, uh, you know, nice overall meter. I think the boot gives it a sense of heaviness, which it doesn't really need. I mean, it's not going off the bench. So um, yeah, it's just a really nice looking meter. Let's do a few tests. 5.57 volts coming up. 5.00 is what we wanted. So a little bit out of calibration, no doubt. We'll see if we can maybe do something about that. All in all though, Oh, it's 25 years old. Inside the meter, we have a VR1 and a VR2 pot. So I'm gonna try the VR1. Now, unfortunately, I located the manual, but it didn't say anything about calibrating uh, with the pot. So we're gonna wing it here and see what happens. So I'm just applying a little bit of pressure here and bringing it down a bit. Let's see what we have. Oh, look at that. That is working out just phenomenally. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Oh yeah, almost there. Oh yeah, so VR1 it is for our DC voltage. And we were at five. I wanna be back to five. And we're at five, awesome. Truth be told, there was not a whole lot of yellow Radio Shack multimeters back in the day. No, most of them were this sort of a somber, grayish, darkish, blackish look. Uh, yeah, yellow was definitely not the norm. Oh, hello. Price on this meter back in 1999 was, are you ready for it? 69.99 US dollars back in 1999. Today's equivalent, that's about 129 US dollars. Wow. 
celebrate that one. This had a really good continuity. Not the loudest per se, but boy, it latched really quickly. Awesome. In capacitance mode right now, and I don't get too excited because it only had a 40 microfarad range. That was the max, 40 microfarad. Uh, 10 millifarad cap, and eh, not even close. So yeah, even though it boasts that capacitance function, it was really still rather limited. Also, as you can see, we have a little bit of parasitic capacitance coming up here, 0.091. Uh, it should be zero, and there's no way to rel it. We do have that hold zeroing function, but that is not for capacitance. Too bad. Still, it worked pretty good, though. Here's a 3.3 microfarad capacitor, and that's coming in just under 3 microfarads. Let's look underneath, shall we? Look at that beautiful shielding on the interior of the Radio Shack multimeter. Beautiful. Boy, they sure know how to do it back then. Have a little bit of foam here for that 9-volt battery just so it doesn't go tossing around. And there is the main PCB. That is absolutely gorgeous. Big, big current shunt. Now remember, this did not have a fuse on the high current. Strictly that current shunt. That's it, that's all. And look at the soldering. Look at the soldering on those input jacks. Wow. Here are those trim pots, the VR1 and VR2. I used the VR1 earlier to calibrate this meter and that nice big speaker over there on top. Now, something a little bizarre, you don't see this. Uh, we have a reset button, a reset button. Well, according to the instruction manual or the uh, user manual, this reset is if you change the battery and for whatever reason, the meter does not turn back on, even with a fresh battery, they say to use the reset function. Interesting. So to me, I mean, just removing the battery, putting a fresh battery on, that is basically as hard a reset as you can do. But for whatever reason, they had a separate reset button here that will do the same thing. So it's in the user manual, hit the reset if all else fails and the meter doesn't turn back on. And Radio Shack was so kind to give us another spare milliamp fuse over here at the top with that signature red ribbon, which we saw on all of their meters to easily pull that fuse. We even have a nice brass threaded insert for that one screw removal for the backing. And we have a fab date, seven, um, rather, 0924, 1999, September 24th, 1999, when this multimeter was made. There's the main IC, that's a Fortune Semiconductor. FS971 MT02, an early one in the Fortune uh, IC years that digital to analog conversion, the whole nine yards all on that one chip. Look at that big tin can oscillator. Whoa, that is a big one. And one thing that's really nice to see too is those tracks, Radio Selector tracks are nicely greased. I don't know if you can see on camera or not, but yeah, look at that grease. Very, very nice. And strangely enough, look at that. We have S1, S2, S3, S4. Um, on the back of the PCB as well. So S1 is the primary reset and we have uh, three more of these reset buttons on the back of the PCB. That is just weird. Have a little bit of an oxidation going on here. So I'm gonna give this a wee bit of a cleaning. You can just tell here. And uh, yeah, a little bit of cleaning. I'll probably uh, get some fresh dielectric on those tracks as well. Give it a good cleaning. And finally, on the other side of the PCB, there is our rotary selector switch as well. Look at that, just two pads, and those are just in amazing shape. And we have that plastic little inlay acting in, as a replacement for those balls and springs. Very nice. Also have our elastomar over here at the top. And that is about it. One other thing I wanna point out as well is look at the uh, method that they've used. They don't have soft membrane or soft touch buttons. It's actually a very thin plastic inlay that connects the buttons and you're just going by this sort of friction and that is how those button presses work. And I mean, it, it seems to work. So very, very cool. Radio Shack multimeters are definitely some of my retro favorites. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this little sojourn down vintage memory lane. You, me, and the Radio Shack. 22801.